Checking one two. Hello, hello chat. How's everyone doing tonight? Apologies for um being later than usual tonight. Uh right now I'm just zooming right through everything, trying to get everything set up. So I do apologize for it. Uh, what else? <laughs> yep. Hold on a moment, I'm just doing some behind the scenes stuff, alright? Uh, so, how's everyone doing tonight? Hopefully, good I hope. And... Today, well, I had another assignment to be done, so that's kind of why I was late, unfortunately. So yeah, that's really the whole reason that I'm late. Sorry about that, chat. Uh... Excuse me for a moment as I do some typing right now. <laughs> I'm just doing some things right now. Hold on.
Okay, yeah, I apologize for so much of this, um, empty silence that you guys are hearing now. It's, uh, I'm just trying to get everything set up. I'm so unprepared. I'm so sorry, chat. <laughs> I wanted to do this whole, um, TTRPG teaching streaming uh, stream. But I'm just so unprepared, so I apologize. But yeah, so please do tell me more about what you guys, what everyone has been, uh, you know, doing over, over the two weeks, you know? Any progress, something that you guys are proud of, you know? You know, share whatever stories you want in chat while I deal with some stuff, alright? Thank you. <laughs> I spelled stuff. I don't like that. Stream health is still good. Yeah.
All right, apologies about that chat. Uh, just making sure that no one is barging into my room and disturbing us. Let me see. Let's do this. Okay, so... We're going to be doing a quick little copyright disclaimer, if you don't mind. Uh, what is it? Let's see, this is just basically, you know, talking about copyright, about how I'm just using all of this as a teaching tool, really. That's basically it. I'm just using this as a teaching tool. There's no copyright infringement intended, you know. I'm using, sure, I'm, I'm going to be introducing people to um, all a whole host, host of TTRPGs. But that does not mean something bad is going to happen, right? Uh, let me check. Yes, yes, that should be fair use because I'm using them as teaching tools. All right, let's continue then. Yep. So yeah, this is my introduction to tabletop role-playing games. This is, so for those that have just arrived, welcome, welcome. I am Raziel Peregrinus, the angel of secrets and mysteries. And I'm here to teach everyone that visits the stream of how of what exactly tabletop RPGs, a, a tabletop role-playing games are, you know, or abbreviated, abbreviated as TTRPGs, and just teaching you all terminologies and, you know, why the hobby is quite popular, and it's kind of more of the intricate details. All right. Next. So my goals for this presentation are explain what is a tabletop role-playing game, TTRPG, teach the basic gameplay mechanics of most, if not all, TTRPGs, because all tabletop role-playing games are different, they have different rule sets and whatnot, and requirements to play them, so yeah, you'll see. <laughs> The different genres of tabletop role-playing games uh, and I'll be providing examples of tabletop role-playing games near the end of the presentation. And I'll be providing a few websites to find tabletop role-playing games. Note that most of these examples are kind of free? Kind of? Sort of? Ish? Yeah, I'm mostly going to be introducing um, everyone to free tabletop role-playing games because, you know, the barrier of entry is kind of high with, with tabletop role-playing games. They're not very, they're not as accessible as video games are with, you know, price tags, price tags and whatnot. So let's begin, okay? Uh, if you have any questions, chat, feel free to, you know, type it in and I'll read it over, uh, once in a while. I only have a single monitor, so I wouldn't be needing to switch back, back and forth between looking at my PowerPoint and at YouTube at the same time, so apol apologies in advance if I miss your, uh, questions, okay? <laughs> If you can all hear me, just uh, let me know, or I will speak up louder. So yeah, just, you know, if you cannot hear me, just let me know. That's it, okay? Uh, what else? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Tabletop role-playing game terminology, okay? So here are some of the terminologies that we're going to go over. T 
tabletop role playing games itself, uh, storytellers, game masters, dungeon masters. Those are basically the same uh, roles, just different names that are used for it. And here are what is this? Player, player and player characters, also known as a PC. Players and player characters are a bit different, and yet at the same time they're also linked together. Non-playable characters, NPCs, which is a very, which is a concept that, that even uh, video gamers know of, so yeah. Character sheets, uh, settings, and sessions, adventures, campaigns, rules light games, rules heavy games, dice types, yeah, it was, it's kind of a big list, you know? So we're going to start off with the uh, Wikipedia definition of TTRPGs. From what Wikipedia says, TTRPGs are a form of role-playing game in which the participants describe their characters' actions through speech. Speech being, you know, mostly spoken word, but, you know, if someone needs to use sign language or something, you know, that, that also works. So I think that's kind of a bit of a... Well, speech can come in different types, right? So, but that's neither here nor there, right? In a way. So the participants of of the game determine the actions of their characters based on the character's characterization and the actions uh, succeed or fail according to a formal a set formal system of rules and guidelines. Within the rules of the game, players have the freedom to improvise and their choices shape the direction and outcome of the game. Here's my personal definition of what a tabletop RPG is, because I think the Wikipedia version, while it is, it's good, but you know, it's a bit wordy and difficult to understand, so... So it's basically, my definition of it is a form of role-playing game that typically involves dice, character sheets, players freely creating... Freely creating and controlling their characters through speech while within a formal system of rules and guidelines. Uh, apologies chat if I suddenly stop talking, it's just, it's very loud outside my room and there's people walking around the house and talking. So, apologies if I had to stop and pause and mute quickly, because, yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's continue. Storytellers, game masters, dungeon masters, etc. Basically, different titles and monikers for what are what is essentially the same job of one person. It's basically they are the people who controls who controls the world and its inhabitants to react to whatever the players' characters uh, do. Very simple, right? Uh, let me go back. Yeah, so yeah, just just people, you know. Technically, anyone could be a, a any player can be a storyteller. Any Storyteller can also be a player, you know, or dungeon master. Okay. So players and player characters. Players, the people who create characters to interact with the world created by the ST, the GM, DM, and or the entire group. Um, I'm going to have to reword this, but... Basically, it's just, you're just players are basically people that just play with a world that's created either by one person, usually the, 
the storyteller, GM, DM, or the world can be created by the entire group. That's basically what the definition is for this one. Player characters. These are characters created by the players as a means of immersing themselves, themselves being the players, into the tabletop role-playing game world. Yeah. Player characters are basically one of the few ways of players being able to interact with um, the TTRPG world. That's really straightforward, you know. Sure, there is the, you know, the storytellers, the GMs, the DMs who do create the world, but, you know, um, there are some games that that are single player, but that's neither here nor there. I'll probably introduce those later, later on. The examples I'll be showing you are, well, I'll talk about that one when, when I get there. Non-player characters, okay. So these are characters typically, let me see, sorry, I'm just stopping to check on something. Okay. Uh, these are characters that are typically controlled by the storyteller, the game master, the dungeon master to interact with the player's characters and the world that's been, you know, created. And the keyword here is uh, typically, like, as in 99% of the time, these type of characters are controlled by uh, the game master, the storyteller, DMs, etc., you know, yeah. <laughs> Character sheets. Character sheets are basically records of a player character in a role-playing game. They include important details, notes, game statistics, and background information a player would need during a play session. So yeah, this is a very broad kind of uh, definition because, you know, game stats are different from game to game. Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinders use basically about the same stat blocks. Although, although I believe Pathfinder Second Edition is changing that up uh, right now, I believe, so they could you know kind of avoid copyrighting issues with Dungeons and Dragons currently. I think. So you know. Different stats for different games, so it's because you know if one game is a uh, science fiction focus, you know it'd be kind of silly to have a stat like magic exists in such a world because you know a fantasy setting versus a sci-fi setting, some stats or abilities or skills don't exist in one setting because you know the setting. <laughs> So now we're going to look at some character sheet examples and all of these um, upcoming uh, role playing games are typically not single player. There are single player games, tabletop role playing games out there, however they are not included in this presentation uh, because I was thinking you know tabletop role-playing games are a bit more of a team effort kind of things team effort kind of hobby so they so what is it um yeah so I decided you know what because tabletop average are RPGs are mostly multiplayer games, so yeah, that's kind of why I chose these examples. All right. So of course, the first example is gonna be the most notable uh, TTRPG, Dungeons and Dragons, 
fifth edition this one as you can see on its left it has the strength dexterity constitution intelligence wisdom and charisma and, you, and then you see there's the skills and then there's the saving throws so much of this yeah there's other things too that would have constituted a character sheet there's also like what was it the spell list that you could write down all the spells you have if you're playing a spellcaster class but that's not but this is well i mean it could count as a character sheet but you know this is this is basically all you really need in order to start playing all the information you need is right here one page next one my one of my favorite systems it's a fake core system i'll um explain a bit more of about it later on it has its own uh presentation but you know yeah as you can see this um character sheet is a bit more different right it's not it's is it a little bit less condensed i guess that's the right word phrase it's uh, not as condensed as you may expect, I guess. Uh, as you can see, it, it contains all the information you need. Character, name, description, and set the skills. And there are other stuff too that, uh, that I'll, I'll explain in, you know, big core systems uh, PowerPoint presentation in the future. But not not now. It's just you know, kind of to get your your brain turning about you know how different some of these uh, character sheets are. Fate accelerated. It's basically what is it? A sort of different version of Fate Core. It's a little bit different, but it's runs on the same ideas foundation i think that's the right word foundations yeah as fake core again i won't have to explain it in the future with another uh stream but yeah and lastly well not lastly this is fake condense it's basically fake core but updated a bit so yeah okay Chronicle of Darkness. This is a different kind of thing. It's a modern supernatural setting. As you can see, it's again, it's very interesting uh, page layout, you know, with the cool pictures on the side, on the margins, left and right margins right there. Very, 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 very cool. And on the bottom of the character sheet you could kind of it basically tells you how to fill out the character sheet itself so and i think that's just you know that's that's kind of cool it's you don't need to look through the rule book you only need to flip through the large rule book to be like oh where do i what i needed to do to um, fill out the character sheet you could kind of look at the bottom and be like oh okay this is how I uh, how I do things, right? Uh, I think I forgot. I, I think I think I think every character starts out with a one dot and every every kind of attributes, and then add add it on. I think could be miss remembering everything though magical kitties save the dead day it's a very cute kind of thing as the name says it's basically playing as um cats with magical powers and saving humans from 
supernatural threats and you know just solving trying to solve the problems of the cat's uh, owners you know you do not have to be a cat in this game you could be i don't know a little mini dragon if you want to or a dog with magical powers it does not matter it just be whatever you want really that's that's really what i can say about it okay sigula quest okay this one's an interesting one it's um it's a fantasy role-playing game in the same vein of you know uh dungeons and dragons fifth edition and pathfinder second edition well it doesn't really have to be an edition honestly but it's kind of simpler i think simpler than Dungeon Dragon Fifth Edition. It's it's its own system. It's it's um of course, like I said, it will get its own dedicated uh presentation in the future. But yeah, just you know. White Lies. This one is basically a game of espionage. Your espionage. You are playing as a spy agent and you're just, you know, doing spy... If you've seen uh, action spy movies of the past, you're basically recreating those moments with your characters and... Yeah, that's that's basically it. Hyper Light Drifter, yes. The video game Hyper Light Drifter also has its um, an official tabletop role-playing game version of it. It's really cool. It's, um, at least I think it's cool. The combat takes place in like a little mini arena. It's a bit cramped, so it's a bit different. I'll just, yeah, I think that's the best way I could describe the tabletop uh, version of the game. It's, it's different from a lot of other tabletop role-playing games that I have, that I, I have listed uh, earlier. Okay, next is The Void. Uh, I actually forgot what The Void is about. <laughs> I added this in because I thought, you know, it's... I thought the design was a bit interesting and different. Is it? I have no idea why I added this one in. I guess I guess I added this one in because of its um kind of different design. The design of this character sheet is though well, it's it's kind of like an Excel sheet, I guess. And, oh, apologies, let me, I think my voice might have spoken too loud and I have uh, been cut off. Um, I think I chose to display this character sheet because it is, it looks different, right? It's very, it looks like an Excel sheet. Oh, it looks like an Excel sheet. Yes. That's, that's why I chose this. So as Chad can see, there is um what is it? A great deal of variety within the within the creation of these character sheets, right? They all in the end reflect they all in the end reflect the game of which they hail from apologies for a moment I'm just 
I am just, uh, there's this voices in the background, so I'm just lowering it. Let me see if I can do anything. If if my voice is too loud, chat, please, you know, let, let me know as per usual. Okay. Okay, let me check if I need to do anything. I'm just finding it funny how X, Excel kind of causes the speaker to break or something like that. Yeah, Excel, 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 L, Excel. Okay, that, that, that's just funny. I don't know why it's peaking like that. Okay, Excel, Excel. <laughs> yeah, I just had to turn on my microphone a little bit so that way it won't peak accidentally, I guess. Yeah, guess this is a good lesson I'm learning is that, you know, any letter, any word that has the X sound in it will cause it to cause my microphone to not pick it up correctly, I think. So, good learning experience, all right. Moving from character sheets, we are now going to settings, you know, the world that the characters will inhabit. As I said, it is basically the world and the genre that each game systems cater to. That's what settings do, right? Here are some examples of set of that. For high fantasy, we have Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, and Quest. For modern supernatural, we have World of Darkness, Chronicles of Darkness. I probably got thrown in Magical Kitty Save the World, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Science fiction will include Cyberpunk, yes, the video game. Before the video game was a video game. It was also a TTRPG. Lancer, which is a mecha, which is, you know, space mecha, your Gundam, your whatever else you have there. And then Hyper Light Drifter. Yes. I think I could have put a different one for the modern supernatural one too. I'm blanking on the name again. There's so many games that I have in mind that I just don't remember. Oof. And there's just so much more that I cannot count. I There's just so much genres. There could be even silly genres that don't really have a very specific genre in mind, I guess. I know of one that was about, what was it? Bananas or something like that. It's a bit silly, but you know, it's it's what it is. You TTRPG is just about about having fun, so you know, being silly is part of the fun. Some systems, game systems, are setting neutral, meaning that the rules and guidelines can be applied to um whatever world and genres the participants want. There are, so basically what this means is that, you know, some game rules will say, you know what, you could use the rules that we have in our game to play in a sci-fi world, a, a fantasy world, a modern setting, whatever you want, whatever setting you want. That's basically what it is what setting neutral games are. Uh, those exist. Let me see, did I put down examples of those? No, I did not. Uh, I think I'll... Mm, let me check, did I, did I talk about them later on? Setting neutral. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, setting neutral games, yeah. 
Oh yeah, let me go talk about those in the future, yeah. Sessions. So sessions are what we call uh the it's basically the gathering of the participants of a TTRPG. The players, all the players, even the dungeon master, storyteller, uh game master, whatever you want to call them, are included there. It's bas basically it's just the gathering of participants and playing a TTRPG for a few hours. That's very straightforward, really. Adventures. Adventures are a set of game sessions, so it's more than one game session, united by characters and by narrative sequence, setting, or goals. It's basically a playable scenario in a tabletop role-playing game. It's that's kind of how you want to describe it. Adventures is a bit more fantasy sounding word, but it's the most apt word, I suppose. It's the most fitting word. Like a lot of our characters do go on adventures regardless if we're in a fantasy setting or sci-fi setting, you know. It's getting from the beginning of the adventure to the end of, end of the adventure and then there's character growth along the way and you know all that good stuff one adventure can typically take up a few sessions unless it is a one shot which typically ends in one session right so adventures are as a as I say by the first bullet point are game sessions, plural. So you just play through multiple sessions, that's kind of how it works. And these are typically constructed by game masters or they can be released as pre-made adventure modules by uh, game publishers which involve a whole slew of things if there were official modules created by uh, game developers, game publishers, you know, that's, that's kind of its own thing. Campaigns. They're a string of consecutive adventures that build up into a long journey. Uh, it typically requires numerous sessions to complete. Rules like games. Wait, let me check campaigns. Yeah, so campaigns is basically a lot of sessions, like a lot, a lot of sessions. There about I would say ten sessions, I suppose, if you had to compare it to a TV series, I guess whether it be anime or live action, you're basically just role-playing characters. You're going through scenarios that have a beginning, middle, and end of each um, episode, I guess. Yes, that's what it's... So if you had to compare it to TV, a campaign is a season of episodes. A adventure is an arc within the season such as you know six episodes to of a season to to complete an arc or something and sessions are basically the one episode themselves really that's yeah i think that's the best way to um compare these three things sessions adventures and campaigns to you know an episode an arc and a season yes a tv season yes i think that's the best way to compare and describe them yes 
So we move on to rules light games and what else? Rules light games are systems that have fewer rules in order to play and are typically settings neutral. What they lack in rules, they make up for in storytelling, less numbers management, and little to no restrictions before and during play. Weaknesses are that there might not be enough rules for certain styles of play, and so homebrew rules will have to help. Uh, I should have done this. I should have created another slide for homebrew itself. But what it means, what homebrew means is not uh, brewing up alcoholic drinks at home, although that could be, could be a definition of it. In this context, it means that we're creating rules in your session, in your, with your uh, play group that makes the experience at your table much more better. Sometimes the home brewing could be, you know, adding new rules, taking out new rules, or just um, altering the rules in some manner to just, you know, just give your you and your play group a lot, lot more fun. That's really all that matters in the end. Sometimes, sometimes some games have too much rules and you're like, I cannot remember all these rules. I think I think some of these rules are not are inefficient to our play, so I'm gonna take them out. That's one way to homebrew it. Another way is saying this game is lacking in important rules and details, so I'm going to add them in for more flavor or for more gameplay mechanics. So that's one way to take it. Or they just alter it and say, you know. This rule, it's it's almost there. I'm glad it exists, but I think it could use just a few more tweaks in order to, for it to be a legitimately good rule that I think me and my other players at my table could agree with, you know? So, yeah, that's what homebrew rules is. I should have... Um, I should probably redo this presentation later on. Hold on, Chad, I'm just, uh, I am just, as I said, I'm dealing with, uh, people that are talking in the background, so apologies in advance once again. Okay, what else? I'm just testing one, two, testing, testing. Okay, my voice, as long as my voice can still somehow reach everyone, it should be fine. All right, Let's see. Reaching the one hour mark. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Examples of rule like games the fate core system, fate accelerated, fate condense, uh, cogent rule role play, which is um, in its alpha, I think, or at least I think it is. Or at least in its, uh, I think it's in its 1.0 version, but I think think yeah, that Cogent is going through some, uh, let's just say major alterations right now, so probably not, not Cogent 2.0, but something like a Cogent 1.5, I think, based on what I've seen in Cogent's Discord server. But anyway, um, is Cogent really light? I think I, I probably should take off cogent, but 
I don't know, it's, it's, it's weird, you know. Sometimes some of these games can be in the middle of Rules Light and the next one. And uh, Magical Kitties Save the World, it's very simplistic, it's almost like, uh, what is it? Kids on bikes, bikes, kids on brooms, those are in the same vein of it. So yeah. I am definitely going to do a 2.0 version of this, uh, of this presentation in the future because I'm just realizing that I'm missing some slides that probably could be more informative and I could include more examples, but you know, I think, I think what I have right now is probably okay. All right, next, rules heavy games. Compared to rules light, these are basically games that have uh, systems that are much more structured. They have more rules and guidelines to them. Typically involves some degree of math, reading, and research to play somewhat efficiently and effectively. So there's a lot of crunching, is what we call it. Number crunching, dice crunching. The participants are given more of a concrete list of, of uh, what they can or cannot do before or during play. Like, like they do, these type of games are much more restrictive in and saying, oh, you cannot do this. Here are the things you can do, but then they also list out things that you cannot do. Which, do not get me wrong, uh, rules light games can also do that too. It's just the degree of which they restrict things is a bit... The degree to which, um, rules like games restrict things is of a lesser degree than rules heavy games of course they're both valid game design methods and you know game types themselves it says you know i think i have played i have played uh both rules light and rules heavy games and they're both they're both fun you know that you just you, you learning is part of the fun experience of of the game, I think. Rules heavy games typically has a setting that um that the rules are heavily geared towards. Like uh what was it? Lancer, um uh, Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinders uh Chronicles of Darkness and World of Darkness, those have very stringent rule sets that do not allow much of a... that do not allow much... they're not very malleable, I suppose that's the right word. Malleable meaning flexible or able to be shaped. Yes. Their shape cannot cannot be malleable means that you're able to um shape something, you're able to control something's uh, form or shape. Yeah, and rules heavy games are not very malleable in this context. Yeah. As I said, stated earlier, weaknesses are how intimidating that uh, that rules heavy games are to begin with, because you know if you want to start playing it, then you just say, okay, you want to play this game? Here's the entire rule book. Just read through it, and you know, and then we can start playing. Yeah, that that's not going to um, entice many non TTRPG players to start playing the game because you know they have no experience and if their first experience is having to read through an entire book to just 
uh, just create a character. That's not very. It's it's um a kind of gatekeeping that's kind of inherent within rules heavy games, and 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 I get it. You know, you. It's a very packed um kind of game system. I I like it, and lots of other people would like it too. But you know, it's not exactly beginner friendly because you need them to read read a book instead of playing the game immediately. So it's yeah, it, rules heavy games are not exactly. Good for new players to get into. At least that's that's what I think. You know, unless unless the player is that you're inviting into the game is very passionate or saying, you know what, I have time on my side. I could. I'm passionate. I want to learn about the game. I want to you know figure things out. Then. Those type of players are different, you know. But for the most part, I probably would introduce people via rules, light games first. Examples again are D and D Fifth Edition, Pathfinder Two E, or Darkness and Chronicles of Darkness. If you had to introduce them to a rules heavy game first, you know, Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition is always, you know. The go to Pathfinder 2e is basically Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition but with much, much more rules, so it's much more rules heavy than than Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. So, yeah, just just wanted to you know put it out there. So, yeah, you know, oh, yeah, so here's where we go over the rules light, rules heavy games. If you enjoy creating rules, game mechanics, lots of improv, and not worrying about remembering a lot of rules and guidelines, go with the uh, the rules light games. There, you could just basically jump in and start, and you know, read a few of the rules, and then you could probably even write down the rules on an index card, a flash card, or whatever, and just look at it and be like, oh yeah, I know how to play now. If you prefer rolling lots of dice, calculations, and solid rules and guidelines that tell you specifically what you can or cannot do, well, go with the rules heavy games. You know? the, those are, you know, these are two different types of games and they're both valid, okay? Let's let's be real. Let's let's not try to, you know, uh split people apart by like, you know, which is better, that kind of thing. It's they're both good, okay? All right. Uh, what else? Oh, you really lucky that some stuff. Uh, you can still create rules and game mechanics for uh rules every game. Basically, you you still do homebrewing for them. It says. That uh, you know, most of the rules, the work of of creating the rules and mechanics has already been done for you. In comparison to um, rules light games, where you might need a bit of I don't know game design degree in order to play it. I guess I am partially joking about that, of course, just partially. Uh, of course, most or some games are, you know, somewhere in between the rules light and rules heavy games a spectrum, I guess, if you want to call it. it. It really depends. There's... Typically, we call... Typically, it's more, you know, we kind of categorize the games into rules light or rules heavy depending on, you know, how much they tend to 
lean towards one direction instead of just being you know this is this is super rules light it is what it is and we just kind of keep it into its one category without changing and be like you know this game is more rules light or more rules heavy than this game you know it's it's the nuance i think that matters The dice types, the different types of dice that are used in most TRPGs are the D4, the D6, D8, D10, D12, D20, and percentile dice. The D basically stands for um, dice, and the numbers stand for the numbers of size that a dice have. D4 meaning a four-sided die, D6 meaning a six-sided die, D8 for, you know, 8-sided, D10, 10-sided, D12 for 12-sided dice, and D24, you know, 20-sided dice. Yeah. Other kinds of dice exist out there, such as uh, D3, D30, D100, and so on. You... If there's a num if there is any number out there that exists, they can most likely be turned into a dice, you know. A D2 dice could just it's basically just, you know, flipping a coin because, you know, coins have two sides. That's really what a D2 is. I don't even know if there's a D1 dice out there, but you know, why would you have a D1 dice? Not every system use a uh, numbered dice. Yeah. Uh, there is. I probably should have included more about the kind of games that do not use numbered dice. Uh, what is it? The Fate Core, Fate Accelerated, and Fate. Condensed are example are an example of not using numbered dice. They all use the same kind of um, plus blank or minus on their dice. There's there are a six sided dice, but instead of numbers, they're covered with um, pluses, minus, or blanks on their sides. That's the most briefest and most current example that's on my mind. And here are my personal dice that I doxed myself when I created this one. Here they are, yeah. My own personal dice, as you can see from top to bottom, that's a D4, D6, D8, uh, I think that one's a D10, and then this one's a D12, D20, and then the one at the bottom is a percentile dice. Yeah. I actually have them with me. Let me see. Should I just take them out and roll a bit, I guess? Uh, let me see. I don't have them right here. This is going to be a dice rolling ASMR I got. Let me see. Ah. I'm trying to even hear this. Let me, uh, hold on. Let me roll. Actually, let me just, let me just turn my volume all the way up. But it's going to be a dice ASMR stream, I guess. Well, oh, went before. Alright, one more. Yat Yahtzee. Okay. That's it. Okay.
Let me just put them all back in our little elastic bag and... Okay. Yep. But yeah. I got these dice as a gift during my time at a... What was it? An Angel University Dungeons and Dragons club. It was a short lived club. The members all graduated for the most part. But I did enjoy the very brief time I had with the members. Unfortunately, I don't. Well, yeah. Not. Angel University, but Human University, apologies. But yeah, I enjoyed playing with the humans. It was a good experience, and you know, I got these dice as a kind of gift. I was going to get um a dice bag to get, go along with them, but uh, we ran out of sessions. Like, we cancelled a lot and classes got in the way so that was unfortunate yeah good memory so and very practical too you can use them as all traps and throw it at someone i guess here are some websites that i recommend to use for your tabletop role-playing games drive through rpg is basically the amazon of uh, role-playing games you could buy basically almost anything here that you need to play role-playing games from rule books whether it be a physical edition or a pdf edition pdf uh, file for it you also buy things like dice cards what else i don't know what else they, guess they sell but yeah there's lots of uh paraphernalia for tabletop role-playing games here so you know drive through rpg they also have um discounts for things they also sometimes can have a free game day or something like that i think that's what it is so you know pick up free things there sometimes sometimes publishers there will put free supplemental things on there so yeah it's also a good place for you to, you know, self-publish, I think. Self-publish your tabletop RPGs if you want to do that, I guess, yeah. D&D 5e Wikidot. It's, it's your number one resource for playing uh, Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition without needing to buy the source Robux. I'll be very honest, I do not care for the lore for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, or Dungeons & Dragons in general. I prefer, I do enjoy the mechanics of Dungeons & Dragons, but, and use them to great effect to, for my games, but, you know, if you're looking for just, you know, classes, backgrounds, feats, and other stuff like that too. Background classes, feeds, items. Then yeah, you just go to this website, this wiki dot website. It it basically has everything, you know, it's it's um I think it's ran by volunteers. It's everything you need is here. You don't need to buy any source rule books in order for you to, you know to get the good stuff from each of those source rule books. It's a, it's a good, uh, you know, 
it's a good resource. That's what I can say. I don't know if by saying this that uh, Wizards will try to take down Wikida, but you know, hopefully they won't. I just, I just hope, yeah. Archives of Nethys. Nethys? Nethys? It's for a Pathfinder 2nd edition. That's, yeah, it's kind of the same deal with uh, the Wikita for D&D 5e. But this is just for, you know, Pathfinder 2e. And yeah. Roll20 is basically one of those um, websites that you could buy the rule books with the counted benefit of you know providing you a digital play space to play with others to find games play with strangers you know that's kind of um what did they call it a vttrpg no a vtt a virtual tabletop i should have also added that in as a slide that's i guess that'll be for um 2.0 of this presentation good luck future me how uh what else owl bear rodeo um oh yeah uh, let me just say this um for roll 20 you need to create an account to use this service for our our Bear rodeo you don't need to create an account you just need to um i think you just i don't know it it's been a while since i've last used it so you do not need to create an account for it you just need to create like a little password and then you go in and then that's it you know you share the password with your other playmates and your table mates and you know and you start playing that's about it is that it yep and yeah that's pretty much about it yeah nice one hour 30 minutes okay well it's almost 30 minutes yeah, and that's very much it. I don't have any more slides to show, so let us go back to the chatting screen then, all right? Let's do that. Okay, hello, hello chat. Testing one two three. Oh, testing one two three. Seems I'm peaking a bit. Uh, more than usual. That's fine. This is fine. Okay. Um. So chat. Hopefully you enjoyed my little presentation I made. It's not perfect. This is the first time that I am teaching something. It's you know it's it's my passion. It's uh, something I enjoy, and uh, I do plan on revisiting this presentation in the future. Maybe when there is more viewers more participants but you know what it's it's fine for those of you that, that have made it here so far thank you thank you for watching for listening i hope you've uh learned something about this if i'm definitely going to take down lots of notes and find my PowerPoint later on but for the most part this is it this is it have a good day night week and month and year and I'll see you 
next time in two weeks. Goodbye.